So you probably know, but Chile is basically based in copper and agriculture. And we, if we want to, uh, if we want to be a developed country, we need to boost the entrepreneurs that we have down there to have more options to impact the local economy down there. So that was how Startup Chile was born, with two goals. The first goal was change the culture that we have down there. Take the culture, the local culture, and start thinking globally, okay? And the second goal was position our country as the hub, as the most important hub in Latin America for entrepreneurs. Those were the first two goals ten, uh, six years ago. How, how everything start for us? So, at the beginning, it was just a weird experiment. You know, we're a public program. We're 100% from, from the government. And it was, it was really hard to start a public policy as a startup Chile. As you know, all the government, all the, all the money that they spend, they need to be, they need to be sure what are they going to do with the money. They need to do a follow-up uh, with that money. They need, they need to know pretty much everything of that. But with this weird experiment, it was really hard to see what's going to happen at the beginning. So we start to do this uh, from the Chilean government. And we think about an entrepreneurial program that could bring talented people from everywhere around the world. So we thought about Startup Chile as a virus. And we start to think, OK, what if we create the right environment for this virus? What's going to happen? It's going to spread around the country. Nothing is going to happen. And we start to bring people from everywhere around the world to Chile to start their businesses. Let's put it this way. If you want more basketball players in your country, you need to have a figure like Michael Jordan, right? That's back in the States. For example, in Argentina, if you, have, if you want to have more football players or soccer players, you need to have a figure like Messi or Maradona. That way kids can look up to them and they can think, okay, I want to be like that guy when I'm older. But in Chile, in terms of business, there was nobody to look up to. Everybody that was developing a, a, a startup down there was taking their business to other countries to, to, to scale it um, as quick as possible because our market was so small and we were thinking so locally that it was pretty much impossible to create a startup down there. So in order to have these rock star figures, we need to bring talented people from everywhere around the world to our country. And that's how Startup Chile begins. So what do we offer at the beginning for all the entrepreneurs? We offer to put them in contact with talented people from everywhere around the world. This is an open program for everywhere. There's no nationality, there's no quotes, there's no like anything. I mean, we only care about talent and there's no border for talent, right? So we offer to be in contact with a lot of people from a lot of countries. We offer the opportunity to live in Chile. You know that we are pretty much the end of the world, so this is going to be pretty much the only chance, if you are, let's say, from India, to live an experience in a country in South America that is pretty much at the border of the world. We offer a one-year working visa and a soft landing process. Let's stop one moment right there. Back in 2010, in, in the middle of the, the subprime crisis in the U.S., what was happening there? They were canceling pretty much all the startup visas that were that, were, that they were giving to foreigners because of the crisis, right? So we were the only government in the world that started giving money to foreigners to come to our country. And that was insane. At the beginning, uh, thanks to that, we got a lot of publication everywhere around the world and that helped us a lot to start to bring people, talented people to our country. Also, we were giving equity-free money because we need to low the barriers to bring talented people. So let's take this example. If you are developing a startup in Silicon Valley or Berlin or let's say Singapore also, what are you gonna, why do you want to go to Chile, right? I mean, you're going to go to the end of the world. Probably there's no market for you. Probably, I don't know, it's going to be really hard to scale your business down there. But if we low the barriers and we give them equity-free money without particip participation, they are going to see the value in that and they are going to take the visa, they are going to take all the experience that they're going to have with the community and they're going to choose to go to Chile. Also, we have a co-working space for free and we offer training, mentors, connections and great perks with a lot of 
with a lot of brand. So that was Startup Chile at the beginning. We give them all that to the entrepreneurs, but we ask only for one thing in return, and we like to call it social equity. So in order to change the culture down there in Chile, we need to put in contact all the foreigners that were coming to our country with the Chilean society, right? So every time that they come, that they came uh, to our country to start their business, we give them the money, the visa, the free space to work, and they have to start connecting with universities. They have to go and, and teach to the student how to be an entrepreneur. They have to organize startup weekends. They have to, uh, a couple of years ago, we have the biggest robotics event in Latin America called, called Robotics Day. Uh, and they were all organized by uh, startup Chile entrepreneurs. So all those kind of actions were helping us to change the reality in a, back in our country. So what happened six, six years later? We just turned six years this month, so we're really happy about that. Six years later, Startup Chile, we can say that we help a lot to position our country as one of the hubs in Latin America. This is what some of, uh, some of the most important institutions in the world are saying about that. We can, we can also say that we are... Sorry. There we go. So um, in terms of, of numbers and rankings, we can say that Chile now is the most important entrepreneur, entrepreneurial hub in Latin America. So if you take these five, five or six countries in there, we can, say, we can see clearly, according to the Global Entrepreneurship Index, that Chile is the Latin American hub for startups. So right now, we are one of the most diverse and largest communities in the world thanks to all the startups that have came to Chile. We have invested in more than 13,000, uh, 13, no, you call it 1,300 startups. There you go, sorry. Sometimes I get a little bit dizzy with the numbers in English. So, and this year we're really happy because, because of all the hard work that we're doing in Chile. And I don't want to say that everything that, we, that is happening down there is thanks to Startup Chile, but we're definitely leading this, this entrepreneurial revolution. Um, we are being recognized by different companies like Fast Company, for example, and they, they say that we're in the top 10 most innovative institution in Latin America. Also, the Global Accelerator Report take us in the top five as one of the most, uh, one of the accelerators that invest in more startups in the world. Also, a couple of weeks ago, according to the Jim Institute, we were in the top 10 most innovative accelerators in the world. We were among, for example, Y Combinator, y Combinator one of the most prestigious accelerators in the world. What do we got out of this? As I was saying, you have to think this back in 2010, during the first two years, it was insane that a government was doing what we're doing right now. It was, that was crazy, and that helped us a lot to bring people to Chile, and that was reflected in other press around the world. We were featured in, I love that, by the way, the first one, I don't know if you can see it clearly, that was a publication that we, that we got in The Economist, and in terms of press and communications, that changed everything for us. You can probably not see clearly on the, on the picture that we put in The Economist, but basically, that's the U.S. border kicking out, literally, all the entrepreneurs out of the country, and that's Chile, just like cooking visas and equity-free money, receiving all the entrepreneurs. So that was really graphic, and in terms, as I was saying, of press, that changed everything for us. So what do we have up? It is not loading. There you go. Up to the date, of the 1,300 startups that have passed through the program, there are 77 countries represented there. The most represented countries are, of course, Chile. Then we have the US in the second place, Argentina, Brazil, and Colombia. Those are the five countries most, most represented in our community. In terms of, um, we like to call it open acceleration methodology. We are willing to share what we do down there in Chile, all what we learn with all the institutions around the world. So after Startup Chile, we can say that more than 50 countries start a startup program like ours, like ours. And we work closely with a lot of them to replicate the figure of Startup Chile. We work with Jamaica, Puerto Rico, Peru, Brazil, Malaysia, and South Korea. 
In terms of numbers, bef um, before I go over the programs that we have and how, we do, how do we do it, in terms of numbers, we did a survey this year and we find out that 20% of our portfolio is valued in $1.3 billion. That's a huge, huge success for a public policy in South America. In terms of money raised, our startup have raised 420 million USD. That's more than 10 times the money that the Chilean government have invested in our program. In terms of sales, we don't think that sales is a good, um, how do you call it? Um, it's, a, it's a good unit to, to do an evaluation of the startup. As you all know, probably uh, WhatsApp doesn't make any money and worth millions of dollars. The same happened with Spotify. Uber took like seven years to start winning a lot of money. So we cannot take sales as a good measurement tool. But still, it's good to know where we stand. So our startups are selling up to the date 276 million USD. It's important to know that our survival rate is around 55%. So all the sales that are reported is not for the entire portfolio that we have. So what happened in Chile? Because we're thinking globally. Um, we're bringing people from everywhere around the world. But what happened in Chile? And we start to measure also, and we find out that startups in Chile are selling $42 million per year. And that's only in the last 12 months, three times the money invested by the Chilean government. That's a huge milestone for our program. In terms of uh, employment, of course, as a public policy, we need to take care of all these numbers because after every government, every government makes an evaluation of the program to see if we're going to continue or not. Um, thanks to all, all, the, all the data that we're collecting, we're passing from a government policy to a state policy. So we're there to stay and grow. So in terms of employment, we have created 5,000, 5, more than 5,000 um, employment. And in Chile, 1,500 uh, employment. That's really good. So let's talk about a little bit about the programs that we have and how, how do we do everything. So the first thing that we need or that we ask for when somebody applies for our program is to have a global business, a global mind, OK? So if you're thinking about and a startup that only is going to sell in India, or only going to sell in Russia, or only in Chile, this is not the program for you. You need to think in a global market. Technology base. You have to have technology base. Otherwise, how you're going to scale your business around the world. That's going to be the tool that you're going to need to, to reach other countries and other markets. And of course, right now, we're passing to be a program that is trying to change our culture to an accelerator. So right now, that we, we already changed the culture. I mean, we and other actors, of course. The culture already changed, and the country is positioning as the best startup have in Latin America. We need to start thinking about the economical impact in our country. That way, we can use this public policy to reach and be a developed country. So when you apply to Startup Chile now, you have to think, why do you want to go to Chile? Why? Why do you want to be there? You want to, you want to be incorporated in Chile? You want to scale in LATAM? Of course, that we understand that Chile is a super small, super small market for startups. So we don't care if you're not going to sell in Chile. But at least, if you're going to Chile, we need to know that you're going to use Chile as a platform to scale uh, to Latin America. So that's why we sell our country as a good platform to jump to the Latin American market. So in terms of um, the programs that we have, we have three different programs. Uh, we created these three, three different programs in the last uh, year and a half, I would say, when we were changing, we were turning from an entrepreneurial program to an accelerator. And we created these three different programs for different stages. The first one is the Ed Factory, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, the Ed Factory is a pro three months program. We give around $14,000 for three months, and it's a pre-acceleration program. The good thing about this is that if you want to apply to that program, at least one of the founders of the startup must be female. Why do we want to do that? Because as you all probably know, women in technology or developing startups, uh, um, the rate is really low. So we need to take them from when they have that idea to start to working with them at the beginning. Because they have a really good ideas, 
but they never do, uh, they never jump and they never start to develop their startup. So we need to take them from the very beginning. Then we have the seed program, the most recognized program in, in, in a startup Chile. Uh, we select up between 80 and 100 startup per, per batch. We have two batches for each program. And then we give around 30K um, and all the benefits that I was telling you before. Then we have the scale program. And the scale program we give 100K and it's one year long. And it's only for companies that went through Startup Chile and want to stay in Chile to start doing business in there and then scale globally. So if you go to Chile, you go through the seed program, you can stay there for six months. And if you see any value in our country to jump into Latin America, you can apply to the scale program. That way you can scale faster. So these are the pillars of our program. What, what do we do down there? The first one is equity-free money, one of the most important things. Then we have the acceleration program. Then our community, you know that without the community, there's nothing to do. And then we have the network, the networks. So we connect our startups with mentors, with big companies, and every actor that you need to do business down there. A quick example of what we're getting down there is one of them is Love for You, a Chilean startup that developed a laboratory in your smartphone. They start to use the, all the sensor of the smartphone to transform it in a laboratory. So in, this is a Latin American reality. We have a lot of schools and they have a hard job teaching science because they don't have a laboratory to teach it, right? To do experiments, to measure velocity, I don't know, to take a microscope and see things in there, you know? So they took the cell phone and transformed it into a laboratory. They are doing really great. They are expanding to the US. They are right now in Silicon Valley raising some money and they won the Intel Global Challenge in 2014. So they're doing really great. This is a US company. They do skateboards. These are really traditional product, but the process of how they get into the product is really innovative. So there are uh, three Californians. They went to Chile to surf. We have great, great uh, beaches for that. So if, if you if you like to surf, I really recommend you to go down there. So they went to Chile and they found out that the fisher, fisherman communities were, were really poor. And every time that they, were that they went into the sea to collect more fishes to sell them, they were collecting more garbage than fishes. And all the garbage that they were collecting were pretty much all the nets that we were throwing away previously. So they saw an opportunity here and they took all the nets of the fishermen and they took it to the US and they put it in a skateboard. They transformed those nets into a skateboard. So that way, they're helping our communities to diversify their economic, um, how can you say? Um, I mean, they are not only focusing right now in, in take fish out of the sea, but they are focusing also in take the garbage out of the sea and to transform that in a physical product. So that's the kind of startup that we're looking for. Another one, one of my favorites is a Chilean German startup called Baby V. And it's basically for premature baby. So once, once you put a baby in an incubator, um, there's, there's something strange happening because you have the baby in that incubator away from the mother. And you know that the first days of a baby is really important to be connected with the, with the mother, right? So that device that you see there that looks like a turtle is connected to another device that is in the incubator and the mother put it in the chest, and that device replicate how the mother breathed, the corporal temperature, uh, the heart breathe, uh, the heart um, beat, and everything that the mother is doing pretty much. So, so that way they can connect the mother with the baby there. It's amazing. They're, they just proved the prototype, and they are start to sell it in a lot of hospitals under in Chile and in Germany. So those are a few examples of, um, of the startup that we're taking down there. And also, I want to stop a little bit to explain what do we do with the S program, the, the S factory, and that's a program for female founders, why we're doing that. So back in 2015, when we launched this program, we were reading a lot about female, female led, female leaders, females developing startups and everything like that. And we find out a lot of data saying that, for example, uh, there was a Harvard study that was saying that a, a female founder in a startup, a leads it's going to duplicate the performance of the startup. And we were like, oh, this is amazing. We need to put more women there then. So as you see, there's an economical reason of why we want more women developing startups. There's, 
it's, it's not just like a public policy that is looking to bring more women uh, as a marketing phrase or something like that, saying, yeah, yeah, we're, we're supporting women because, I don't know, it's a trend. No, there's an economical reason of why we're doing that. So, for example, if you see, all the kind of jobs are similar in terms of, uh, of women and, 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 and men's, right? But if we take them to STEAM jobs, like science, technological, engineering, and math, we see that there's a really low percentage of women working in that area. But, for example, in science, we find out that the, in terms of skills, in Chile, the women have exactly the same skills as men. But if we see the kind of jobs that they are taking, there's no, pretty much there's no woman going into that kind of jobs. We, have, we can see exactly the same in the math-related jobs. Women and men have the same abilities, but there's no women working in that industry. Why is that happening? And that's happening because, because of the culture. It's a cultural thing, especially down here in Latin America. So, if we, wanna, if we see that they have the same abilities, what's the problem there? There's something in the process that is not working correctly. That's why we create the S Factory program. To take the ideas, to take the abilities of females and start to working with them in a really, really low stage, really, um, how do you call it, um, basic stage. So we accept in that program only ideas up to six months of developing. That way we can work closely to women and make sure that they are going to have a success, uh, a good startup start selling uh, as soon as possible. Our woman participation rate is 18%, so we are really happy about it. We're growing and we definitely want more women in Chile and, of course, in Startup Chile. Well, that's it. Thank you, guys.